Hey guys, I just want to share with you quickly something that God has put on my heart. You know, in today's world, I see a lot of people struggling to know whether or not their love, they're burdened by the weight of sin and failure, and they, and they just wonder whether or not they're loved. And so I just want to do a quick lesson that I'm calling six reasons that people don't think God can love them. So let me just jump into it right away. You don't know the first reason I think that people think that God can't love them is that they think I'm too messed up. I'm too messed up. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Guess what? God's not surprised that you're messed up. In fact, the very reason God sent his son Jesus into this world was because we are messed up. And so if you think God can't love you because you're messed up, you're wrong. It's the fact that you're messed up that God loved you enough to send you his one and only son. Reason number two that people think that God can't love them. Number two, I deserve punishment. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3 through, 3 through 5 says, All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by sinful nature objects of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in our transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. It's true. The judgment for our sin is that we do deserve punishment. But the good news is that, that God sent Jesus to be our punishment when we believe in him. And we believe in the sacrifice of the cross. We don't stand in front of him to be punished anymore. We believe that we deserve punishment. Well, that's true, but Christ came to take our punishment. He came in God's great mercy. He came to love us and to take the punishment that we deserved. The number three reason that people think that God couldn't love them is this. They think, I'm not lovable. I'm not lovable. Genesis 131 says, then God looked over all he had made and he saw that it was very good and evening passed and morning came marking the sixth day. Here's what I want you to know. God created you. If you think you're unlovable, then what you're saying is that God didn't make you right. And when God looked out over his creation, he looked and he saw the people he created and he said that he loved them. He said, it is good. It is very good. God didn't mess you up when he made you. Yes, we've all sinned and walked away from God and fallen short, but he loves his creation and God doesn't make mistakes. And so when you say, I'm not lovable, God says, yes, you are. I love you. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son that whoever believes in him would not perish, but have eternal life. Number four, I'm not worthy of staying with. I'm not worthy of staying with. Deuteronomy 7, 9, know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commands. When you think that you're not worthy of staying with, God wants you to know that he is faithful. It's his nature to be faithful, and he's not going to quit on you anytime too soon. He will always be calling out to you with the voice of invitation, with the voice, come back to me. Reason number five that I think people believe that God can't love them is that God could never deal with me. God could never deal with me. I'm too hard 
to deal with. Psalm 8615 says, But you, O Lord, are a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. You know, the reality is we all face people that are so hard to get along with um, that we're like, man, I can't even deal with them. And then sometimes when we're beating ourselves up because we're in that place, in that place of feeling no love, we think nobody else could love me, nobody else could deal with with me. God is gracious. He is slow, slow to anger. He's compassionate and gracious, and he's abounding in love and faithfulness, his word says. Um, Reason number six that people think that God can't love them is, I don't want to hope because I don't want to be let down. I don't want to hope because I don't want to be let down. Romans 5, 5 says, and hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. Man, that is an incredible passage of scripture. And as I think about this, you know, we all have been disappointed But God promises us in his word that his hope is not a hope that disappoints. And so we want to put that hope in him. And he puts his love, he pours out his love in our hearts through his Holy Spirit. This is his invitation to us. So how does God love you? You know, a lot of times we wonder like, man, okay, if it says that God is love, but how does he love me? Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 17 says, For the Lord your God is living among you. He is a mighty savior. He will take delight in you with gladness. With his love, he will calm all your fears. He will rejoice over you with joyful songs. I I love that verse. We have that verse put on the wall in our daughter's room because we love that passage of scripture. We need to remind ourselves that passage of scripture. And so this is it. Man, God is singing around you. He's around you. He's rejoicing among you. He's living among you as your mighty savior. So whatever you need to be saved from, your savior is there with you. You're not unlovable. He loves you and wants to be there and save you from the mess that you're in. In order to be saved from this mess, we have to receive his love. Stop blocking yourself from his love. Receive his love. John chapter 1 verse 12 and 13 says, yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. Man, this is absolutely incredible. When we receive him, when we believe in him, he gives us right to become his children. God loves you and wants you to understand his love. So if you're struggling with the feeling of being un love. Let me tell you, God wants to lavish his love on you and he wants you to receive him as that loving God to adopt you into his household as your, as his child, to give you all the benefits that he can give you. Maybe uh, up to this point in life, you felt unloved, but there's no need to feel unloved today. I invite you just to close your eyes and ask Jesus to be your Lord. Say, God, I need you. Please forgive me of my sins and show me this love that Pastor Pat is talking about. Show me your love. Uh, Just forgive my sin, lift the burden of it, and show me your love that I might know you in this way, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Thanks for listening. Hey, if you're local to Ashford, Connecticut, man, we invite you to show up and come worship God with us at Living Proof Church. Um... Go to our website, ashfordchurch.org, for all the details on times, places. And um, if you want to join us online, you can do that through our Facebook and YouTube page as well. God bless you guys, and God loves you.